Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili and thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, we have our monthly sit down interview with Executive Ike Liggett to talk about county issues. Plus, owners of abandoned properties will soon be fined hundreds of dollars. And later, the city of Rockville flies international flags to celebrate its diversity. But first, another Smart Growth Initiative project opens doors. Executive Leggett took part in the ribbon cutting ceremony of the new MCPS and Parks maintenance facility. Four, three, two, one, cut. A $69 million facility to support maintenance and ensure safety in the county's 204 public schools and 418 parks. And the work that our people do in these facilities is so important. And they are not recognized uh, because, of, because of the work that they do. Because in many ways, uh, we don't know the challenges that they face and the things that they've done to make things efficient and effective for us. Because when maintenance goes well, you don't see the problem. People just assume that it happened. But when it goes bad, it goes bad, very bad. And this is when we have the challenges. So by providing the facilities, by providing the resources, and making certain that we do not get the complaints and resolving problems before they really happen is a benefit for us all. The new MCPS and Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission Maintenance Depot is another smart growth initiative project that supports efficiency by collocating compatible departments with related uses under the same roof. So this is a unique campus in, in that we don't have separate buildings for each agency. Each agency is actually sharing the same building, MCPS on one floor, parks on the other. So it's truly a unique co-location project. It's 150,000 square feet and part of a 130-acre campus, which also houses the Public Safety Training Academy as well as the food facility warehouse. The staff in the building supports schools' facility maintenance and repair, vehicle and equipment repair, and division management. Across from it is the Division of Food and Nutrition Services, where approximately 85,000 meals are prepared daily and delivered to schools. Today we are required to operate and maintain many larger facilities equipped with complicated systems. This sustainability features and the environmental systems of today's facilities also require significant maintenance services. The amount of school's floor area that we maintain has increased by more than 90% since 1985. A total of 575 vehicles will also be maintained from this facility. It's now going to cost residents here in Montgomery County more if they fail to keep their vacant properties in acceptable condition. Susan Kennedy reports on how a new bill approved by the council will protect neighborhoods. When you pass by the front of 9303 Saybrook Avenue in Silver Spring, you will see a home that looks relatively tidy, but go around back and it's a totally different story. This home has been abandoned for close to 15 years. It really is like a ghost owns the house next door. Who is still and neighbors Lana and Neil Ray say it's been a blemish to the neighborhood. And, and the problem is that when you live next to a neighbor who's in the house and a problem arises, you can go and talk about it. But in this case, we didn't really know when she left the house and we didn't know where she went. But now, thanks to a new bill from Councilmember Tom Hucker, Owners of these vacant, dilapidated properties will be subject to hundreds of dollars in fines if they fail to keep them up. I mean, I certainly didn't know the extent of the problem. Some of them are very obvious in the neighborhood, and that's really the first goal of the legislation we passed, is to sort of scope out the problem and create um, a way for the housing department to know how many there are. Currently, owners of vacant properties can be fined up to $500 for code violations that are not addressed within 90 days. However, many times those cases end up in court where they are frequently dismissed. Hucker's bill creates an escalating scale of fees that cannot be contested. In some cases, you know, boarded up windows and doors. In some cases, gutters hanging off houses and, and you know, uh, things like that. And uh, for several of them, big holes in the side of the house, big enough for um, rats and raccoons and other uh, vermin to, to, you know, run in and out of the house. And in the Ray Silver Spring neighborhood, there are several more vacant properties in addition to the house next door. The house directly across the street from us 
is one that we rented happily for about 11 years before we bought this one. It has been empty for about two and a half years. The Rays are hopeful this new bill will put a stop to these types of violations before they become a problem. The legislation will create a master list of vacant or blighted properties that will be registered and monitored by the county's housing department. Since Councilmember Hucker put the word out, he's had hundreds of residents report such properties in their neighborhood. In Silver Spring, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. This week, we sat down with Executive Ike Leggett to tape our monthly one-on-one -on -one television show. Although County Council has not officially approved his proposed FY18 operating budget, the executive had this to say. Well, uh, I haven't heard anything that's drastically bad, but I'm concerned about uh, one or two factors. The expenditures over and above the recommendations because I think we took a very cautious approach, uh, believing that, that there are some challenges out there ahead for us because of the large number of federal workers that we have, uh, some ongoing expenses that we have that's built into the budget already, plus some anticipated costs going into FY19 and beyond. And so we need a little bit more flexibility. And so this budget was designed as a cautious budget, and I hope that they will at least stay within those parameters as close to as possible. You may watch this entire episode of 101 on County Cable Montgomery and also on the county's YouTube channel. Coming up on County Report this week, if you have a deck on your property, maybe it's time to do a safety inspection. Call 311 and get it done for free. Plus, this week in the county's Spanish language radio show, we talked about how the new Economic Development Corporation is engaging in business recruitment. Stay with us, we'll be right back. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Vigili. This week in the county's Spanish language radio show, we received an update from the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation, the new private enterprise that is in charge of the county's economic development. According to its director of business recruitment, part of the work they will be doing is creating a network connecting business to business, services and products. We're reaching out to uh, facilitators who ha happen to have the connections with the companies who happen to know of uh, opportunities where the company may expand or may decide to leave. We're getting connected to that. So our eyes and ears are through uh, not only directly to companies and to folks who have uh, an opportunity to create a business, but also uh, uh, to facilitators and, and, those, and those folks, essentially the real estate companies, accountants, uh, lawyers, who have access to uh, many of the companies here in Montgomery County and happen to know the most updated, um, uh, most urgent need within the private sector, and we're getting connected to those uh, individuals. For more information on resources offered by the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation, visit thinkmocal.com or call 301-857-1942. Do you have a deck in your backyard that has not been inspected for quite some time? Well, take advantage of this opportunity. 
May is Building Safety Month, and that's what actually the Department of Permitting Services is all about. We're about keeping buildings safe for people. During the month of May, we offer a special sort of uh, invitation to our residents to have a free deck maintenance inspection. You know, put it where you're going to put your deck failures occur when people lean over the edge like this to look this is where you normally get most of your pressure we these are designed for a certain amount of thrust against them but really that thrust is people looking out over the edge leaning against it we would we would give this a little bit of shake here you can see that we're getting a lot of movement uh, we did see downstairs that we had lag screws. Uh, we would recommend that you replace this with through bolts, and that's just a matter of backing one out and putting a new one in. We would tell the homeowner there are possibly some things that could be salvaged from this deck as it's repaired, but most of this needs to be replaced and uh, with possibly new, uh, new parts and pieces. Now, when you do that, if you replace one picket, you don't need a permit. If you replace the whole rail system, and the stairs, we ask you to come get a permit from us so that we can inspect it and make sure that it is being done properly. We're not out here just to, to chase you around. We wanna make sure that you're safe. The last thing that I wanna hear ever, and it runs chills through me when I hear of a deck collapse, and it's, we're getting to be that time of year. Everybody's gonna have barbecues, people get on the deck, you get a lot of people there, they all start moving one way or the other and that's just what it takes to break it down and have a collapse and then have injuries. And that's, that's what this is all about, stopping people from getting injured. If you're a county homeowner and wish to have your deck inspected, just call 311 to schedule an appointment. In honor of National Women Build Week, more than 25 teams of volunteers in Montgomery and Prince George's counties are teaming up with Habitat for Humanity Metro Maryland to build decent and affordable housing. In 2008, Lowe's helped to launch National Women Build Week to empower women to advocate for affordable housing. More than 17,000 women are expected to volunteer at construction sites for this year's campaign. Organizers with a Habitat for Humanity Metro Maryland say their goal is to get more women building. What we want is for women to advocate and to build in their community affordable housing. Uh, what we would like to have is have more women in the construction field and to know that it's okay for women to do construction. This is not just a man's job or a man's role. Um, you can learn a lot. You can learn more DIY projects for your own home. So we also want people to leave with skills that they didn't have before they came. Rockville is one of the most diverse cities in Montgomery County, and as Rocky Levin's Kathy Dansler shows us, the cultural pride is flying high. Did you know that more than a third of Rockville residents were born outside of the United States? It's true. And to show our pride in our diverse community, 193 flags from United Nation countries will be raised around the city. I mean, I just noticed them, and I mean, it's, it's kind of nice that they they put them up, you know, it shows all the diversity. I actually grew up around this area, and compared to other areas, the city of Rockville itself is really diverse. They've always included everybody. The idea came from the community during our diversity town hall earlier this year. Even coming down through here, just coming to get lunch or something like that, hearing some of the different languages, seeing the different people and stuff like that, watching the little kids when they sit down here and play together, interacting with all different types of nationalities, ethnicities. You get to learn each other. You get to learn something about everybody. And you're not afraid because someone's different. Right now, there are more than 150 flags mounted on light poles throughout the city. And there's more to come over the next six weeks. Rockville is a progressive and inclusive city. We take pride in that. We are diverse and we welcome everybody. All ethnicities, all languages, all religions, all culinary uh, varieties, and we can all learn and engage. So explore Rockville and find your national flag. Then send us a selfie on Twitter, at Rockville411 or at Rockville11 with the hashtag FindYourFlagRKV. For County Report This Week, I'm Kathy Dancer. Coming up on County Report This Week, a middle school in Clarksburg is dedicated to the woman who donated the land where it is built. And officials attend a ribbon cutting at Interfaith Works. Stay with us, County Report This Week, we'll be right back. 
Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> Now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, Nelly containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Hey, mister, down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The Clarksburg community recently celebrated the dedication of Hallie Wells Middle School. Here's a story. One, two, and three. three. Oh. It was a day of celebration as the Clarksburg community officially dedicated the opening of Hallie Wells Middle School. The need for this school was so apparent and so obvious and it is so wonderful that it's here now and that it is built to serve the students that are in it, to welcome the eighth graders, and to potentially expand in the future for more need. The day was full of musical performances from students in the band, jazz ensemble, orchestra, and chorus. One group previewed the school's production of Annie Jr. I don't Dignitaries from throughout the county spoke about the new school and its community. I'm really uh, happy to see that the Wells family partnered with our MNCPPC, partnered with local government and our state elected officials to actually bring something like this beautiful building to fruition. We tried to fuse the environments outside of school into the school. So as we look to design the furniture and those sorts of things inside the building, we've got stand-up desks in environments where kids can sit in a, a way that maybe they would do at their own house in the living room. Kids like that. They find it a fun place to come, and they're able to relax and learn at the same time. Because like all the friends and teachers, they're all like amazing and nice. And I just enjoy coming here every day. The music program is just amazing. We have a, we have a great teacher. The building is named for a longtime Clarksburg resident who donated her farmland to the community. Children seemed to migrate to Anne Halley. She had the spirit that children could feel. Words cannot express how honored and how humble she would be to inspire the future through the youth of today at Halley Wells Middle School. Thank you. Halley Wells donated her property so that children could see what farm life was like and have an open air space to play. The land is now the site of Halley Wells Middle School, Ovid Hayson Wells Recreational Park, and Red Wiggler Farm. Dozens of county leaders joined Interfaith Work staff for a special ribbon cutting ceremony to unveil the new clothing center. My MC Media's Mitty Hicks has more on the story. Concerned about the impression their previous facility had on clients, Interfaith Works Clothing Center decided to expand upstairs to give those in need a sense of hope. We didn't like the sort of association of, of having a sort of dark and dingy place and, and ha trying to help people who are poor. We wanted to really value their lives by providing a bright, beautiful place like they might see in a retail department store. The old facility was in the boys' locker room at a middle school and according to staff, it wasn't an appropriate location. It bothered me a lot, so I said I have 13,500 clients every single year, a captive audience. What are we doing with them? 
And that is why this new center came to be, a place where clients will have access to clothing, baby goods, household items, and more for free. I do want to do whatever it takes to, to move these people, and we want to lift them out of poverty, so we'll do whatever it takes, whatever they need. And Interfaith Works had plenty of help. Everything's amazing how all the whole community just came in with their helping hands and just became one big, one big dream come true for us of Interfaith Works to open this place. In addition to expanding its clothing center, Interfaith Works is expanding access to job training resources. English classes, a computer lab, and financial literacy courses will all be available at the center's new location. The goal, according to Interfaith Work staff, is to provide families some tools to help themselves out of poverty. In Rockville, I'm Mitty Hicks for County Report This Week. Beginning on July 1st, all customers shopping at any of the 27 Department of Liquor Control retail stores in Montgomery County will be carded. That's the word from DLC Director Robert Dorfman who said there will be few exceptions to the new policy. In the past, customers at the county's stores were only carded if they appeared younger than 35. The new policy requires everyone to provide an ID when buying beer, wine, or liquor at the county's stores. We want to you know, train our staff uh, to make sure that the policy is that everyone who walks in to buy something is, is ID'd. And with very little, very few exceptions, and uh, we'll we'll train them on what those exceptions might be. But again, it's to you know protect our employees and protect our customers um, from having people walk out of there being served if they're underage. Coming up next on County Report this week, the Wings of Fancy Butterfly Exhibit returns to Brookside Gardens, and get ready for some summer fun. Registration is now open for recreation programs and camps. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Get to MC and we'll get you going. Here's your chance to save money and help the environment. Bring your reusable bag when you shop and you'll save five cents for every store bag you don't need. Retailers in Montgomery County charge five cents for the plastic or paper bags they provide. Why? Because plastic bags are the biggest single source of stream and waterway litter, causing pollution and flooding. And every year, Montgomery County spends $3 million on cleanup. So do yourself and the environment a favor. Bring your reusable bag when you shop. You'll fight litter and keep the change. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The Montgomery College men's and women's track and field teams just finished competing in the NJCAA National Championships, and MCTV's Michael Brown was there to cover all the action. Here's his report on how the Raptors fared on the national stage. This year's track and field national championships were held at nearby Howard Community College, and once again, MC stood tall on the national stage as they shook off the rainy cold weather to deliver some outstanding performances. The Raptors' Justina Ababio was the star of the meet. On day two, she won the national championship in the discus with a throw of 32.94 meters. And then she followed that up by placing third in the country in the shot and fourth in the hammer. As a result, she was named the NJCAA Eastern Region Field Athlete of the Year. MC's Alyssa Moran also had an outstanding meet. She anchored the 4 by 100 relay team that came in third in the nation, and she also made the podium in the 100 and the 200. And her performance earned her the NJCAA Eastern Region Track Athlete of the Year honor. Meanwhile, her teammate Kim Stamets finished third nationally in the 400. On the men's side, Ernest Long had a terrific final day, finishing second nationally in the 800 and then third in the 1500. Donovan Tyler excelled in field events, narrowly missing the national championship in the shot, 
and then finishing fourth in the discus and sixth in javelin. His field teammate, Philip Combet, surprised everyone with a third in discus. And Lud Blair ran the lead leg in the men's 4x100 relay that finished fourth in the country, and he also finished fifth in the 100 and sixth in the 200. And when all was said and done, both teams finished seventh in the nation overall, which is remarkable considering both teams were considerably smaller than in recent years. For County Report this week from Montgomery College, I'm Michael Brown. There are literally hundreds of programs and classes to promote active and healthy lifestyles this summer. Registration is now open via activemontgomery.org. Summer programs include aquatics, arts, nature exploration, cooking, sports, tennis, archery, ice skating, and much more. The Summer Recreation Guide is available online and also at the county's libraries. A reminder that summer camps and programs are extended this year additional weeks due to the school year starting after the Labor Day holiday. For more information, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash rec. As temperatures heat up, the staff at the county's outdoor pools are ready for the summer season rush. The county's Department of Recreation will officially open the outdoor pools on May 27th. Maintaining public safety is a priority at all of the county's pools. It is important to remember that if capacity is reached during peak times, it may be necessary temporarily to halt admission to pools. Swimmers are admitted as soon as space becomes available. Happy summer, everyone. And the popular Wings of Fancy butterfly exhibit is back at Brookside Gardens. The display runs through September and it is a must see for all ages. Welcome, here we are at the Wings of Fancy Butterfly Exhibit at Brookside Gardens Conservatory. Um, inside this greenhouse we have butterflies from all over the world flying around freely among plants that provide them with nectar. You can see the entire life cycle of the butterfly when you come here from eggs to caterpillars to the pupa to the flying adults. We also want you to just enjoy the motion and the color and the just um, kind of the fantasy land that this greenhouse becomes when it just becomes um, butterfly world. So it's really a special event uh, that runs for a limited time and it's open every day. A visit to the exhibit is a great thing to do even if you're just um, a mom and a child or uh, you've got friends visiting from out of town, but the butterfly exhibit has become a really popular destination for group visits of all kinds. Um, and we do ask that if you are thinking of bringing a group of 15 or more to the butterfly exhibit, that you please call ahead and make a reservation so that we know that you're coming. During May and September, in the mornings from 10 to 1, we have a large number of school groups that make reservations and come and get tours of the exhibit. So uh, make sure that you get a chance to come down and visit, bring your friends and family. It's really an interesting, exciting exhibit, not just for children, um, but for adults and groups of, of all ages and kinds. For more information, visit brooksidegardens.org. Now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? This is Roger Rabbit. He's just about three years old and he's a neutered male. He has the cutest little rabbit face that I have ever seen. Please find out more about rabbits. They make wonderful pets. And come down and adopt Roger and take him home with you. Give us a call at 240-773-5900 or learn more about Roger the Rabbit on the web, montgomerycountymd.gov ASD. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We leave you today with images from Tacoma Park. It's the annual Safe Route to School 5K Challenge. Several hundred people came out to take part in the different races. Enjoy refreshments, meet their neighbors, and enjoy the day. I'm Morna Virgili, and thank you for watching.